Hello, my name is Tom Stapleton. I'm Executive Director of the Wakefield Community Access Television Station. And we have with us today a brand new person in here in Wakefield. His name is Brendan Kent, and he's the new Athletic Director for the K through 12. Huge job, <laughs> huge job. It's good to have you on board. Thank you. Very good. Thank uh, you. Maybe you could tell us just a little bit about, um, you know, how you got involved with, uh, with sports to this level. Uh, there must have been something that, that got you going in the background there. Yeah, uh, well, actually, I grew up in a huge sports family. Mm -hmm. um, my, my father was a college football coach growing up, so I naturally was involved with athletics since the time I was a baby. Uh, I was one of those kids that grew up in the locker room, in the coach's room, going on buses with the teams. Uh, so my entire life I've been involved with athletics and this is just something that I've always wanted to do. I really feel passionately about athletics, more importantly with helping kids, you know, just make positive decisions in their life and mm -hmm. helping them on the right path with their life. So those are two things I really feel strongly about. Well, um with, with, with that being said, uh, now well, your dad was a coach, and then yes, did, you said you had brothers too, right? Yes, uh, big big so, football uh, family. He so couldn't get away from it. Couldn't right? get away from <laughs> it. I, I had four brothers, so five boys. Four, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. God bless my mother. I don't know how she did it, <laughs> but uh, five boys, um, and we were involved with every athletic team yeah. you can think of. You know, we played every sport under the sun. Uh, we all played in high school. At, Morris High School, <laughs> a little touchy subject there, I know, but uh, yeah. but we all yeah. played we played in multiple sports. We all went on played athletics in uh, college as well. So yeah. huge, big sports yeah. family, yeah. Well, you did mention Melrose, yes, yep. and uh, <laughs> Melrose and Wakefield, you know, kind of a little bit of a rivalry <laughs> no, there. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's great. Yes, I really do. Yeah. I think it's it's great because. Uh, you know the flavor of Wakefield Absolutely, really, yeah. really well, as, yeah. as, as we know, Elrose. And um, I think it's, uh, it's something that it, it hits home. And Absolutely. Uh, for you to, to, to be here, I yeah. said, it's just, you know, I don't know how Melrose feels about it, but uh, <laughs> I think Wakefield feels pretty good. Yeah. But um, so tell us a little bit, you know, about uh, your football days in Melrose. Yep. So uh, unfortunately, we never beat Wakefield. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's when you guys had the big long streak. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we had some great games over the years. Um, but like I said, I was involved, yeah. um, especially involved in Melrose High School football for a very long time, uh, dating back to when my older brothers played. You know, it's like a water boy, ball boy on the yeah, sidelines, yeah. and then my playing days, and then obviously going back there after college to coach. Uh, so I've been involved there for a very long time. Uh, the one thing I want to bring up, and I just have to, it's uh, <laughs> a few years back there, uh, we had the toin cost. Oh, yeah. yeah yes. yep. <laughs> and that's, uh, for people who don't know Oof. what that's about, uh, yep. Melrose and Wakefield uh, had uh, a, a tied season. Yeah. And it, it got to the point where the only way they could break the tie was to flip a coin. Yeah. And uh, it just so happened that Wakefield won the, the toss and went on to win yeah, uh, the Super Bowl <laughs> there, whatever. But uh, the classiness that Melrose showed towards Wakefield at that point was really something yeah. uh, amazing. So th there's a lot of uh, a lot going on here. But yeah. um, some of the older people would remember that. Yeah, my my brother was actually yeah. the captain of oh, the football really? yeah, team yeah. that year, Patrick. Uh, and actually, I was in uniform. I was a freshman on the team. Uh -huh. My brother Terrence was a sophomore. So yeah, that was. Uh, that was a heartbreaker, but <laughs> you know what? Tough one. Yeah. Two yeah. unbelievable teams. Yeah. And you mentioned the classiness, the sportsmanship. Yes. That's what that's what high school athletics is all about. Um, just anybody who was around for that, yeah. whether you're a Merrill's fan or a Wakefield fan, you always remember what an unbelievable yeah. game and what an unbelievable experience just for all great, the yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. So that was quite the experience. Yeah. Well, let's move from high school now to college, yep. and now you're in college, <laughs> and uh, and you started, uh, you moved around a little bit with your majors. Tell yep. us a little bit about that. Yep. So my majors, uh, well, coming out of, as I said, we were talking before. Uh, this is something that I always wanted to do. I was always involved in athletics. From the day I was this tall, I always wanted to be either high school head football coach or high school athletic director. That's all I ever had in my mind, and I wanted to be a, a, an educator. Um, 
I was really a pretty strong student in high school, and uh, I have to admit a lot of my my teachers and my guidance counselors kind of try to steer me away from getting involved in education, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always that fear of budget cuts and teachers don't make a lot of money and as soon as there's budget budget cuts people are going to come after teachers so a lot of people in my life kind of try to steer me away from that um so coming out of high school i i still in the back of my mind i always knew that's what i wanted to do but i tried to go on a different path i mm -hmm. went to st anselm college on an academic scholarship uh -huh. uh, i started out as a pre-med major because i was always very interested in, in health and wellness and I was always very interested in how the body acts and so I started out as a pre-med major. I got to pass my sophomore year I got into organic chem and that's when it just you know what I was spending about 10 hours a day in the lab. Yeah. I was going to football practice after that. It got to the point where it was just kind of too much. Yeah, um, yeah. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to dedicate that many hours of my life to that my roommates who at the time happened to be some Wakefield guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys that I played on the team up there with guys that I competed against in high school, uh, you know, Tommy Kelleher, Mike Leofonte and the Pledge Twins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They were all in the business, finance, so they kind of pulled me in that direction. That's what I ended up getting my undergrad degree in, in finance, which mm -hmm. actually serves me well for this position, given the huge, uh, you know, financial, um, you know, obligation that I have to oversee the finance of the right. department. Right, yeah, it's, it's big, yeah. But, yeah. So anyways, that's that was my major uh, undergrad. I went on, worked as a mutual fund accountant for a year after college. At the time, I had already got back into coaching. I was coaching, and I just, I loved working with the kids every day. Mm -hmm. I just had a passion for it. It's what I, in my deep inside my heart, what I knew I wanted to do, I said, what am I doing? So I, I left the accounting profession. Yep. I went back, I got my license as an educator. Uh, went back, got a degree in physical education. Um, got a job working at Merrill's Middle School as a physical education teacher and kind of the rest is history. Yep. So, Well, it certainly is, is quite a little trip there. Yeah. Now, I understand that you're um, you're really big on youth programs, yes. after school programs. Yes. Tell us a little bit about, about that. So I, I'm a huge believer in after school programming. Mm -hmm. um, any, any after school extracurricular activity, whether it be drama, art, you know, any type of visual performing arts, but in particular, obviously with my athletic background, I'm a huge believer in athletic after school programs. And kind of the reason being is I truly, truly believe that that time period from two o'clock or 2.30, wherever it may be when school gets out, from about 2, 2.30 to about six o'clock, I really believe that that is one of the most critical time periods in young children's lives because a lot of parents are still at work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents, a lot of children come from single family ho households nowadays and mom and dad can't be there right when they get out of work. And mm, right. so that kind of two from, from two to six time period is a time period when kids can make some really great decisions and they can also make some really poor decisions. Mm -hmm. And if they're being supervised by a professional at the school who is reinforcing core values that, that the school believes in, that the community believes in, that, that's really going to benefit that child tremendously. Um, so whether it's athletics or the arts, being involved with an after school program, I am a huge, huge believer in it. Yeah. And um, that's one of my goals here in Wakefield is to try to help promote that. Well, it certainly is. Uh, it's a great way to go. And um, yeah. I know that you, that you had mentioned to me that uh, every once in a while somebody will come back to you yeah. as, as, because you've done so much yeah. coaching that uh, they said, thanks, coach, for yeah. everything. You know, it really meant a lot. Yeah. And um, it's not always the person that gets all the recognition. Absolutely, yeah. uh, I understand you like to tune in on some yes. of the people who may need a little extra help. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, I, was a, I was obviously a physical education teacher yeah. and a coach. And I was a physical education teacher in the middle school. So I taught 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And then I coached in the high school. Mm -hmm. um, and in that 8th grade 
time period, especially at the end of the school year in May and June, I'd always promote you know, getting involved with high school athletics to my eighth graders. Yep. And uh, a lot of, I think in a lot of school systems, a lot of teachers and coaches, they look at those top tier athletes and they go after them. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was the other way around. I, I knew those kids were gonna get involved with athletics. I'd yeah. obviously encourage them, but I really looked for those kids that I thought kind of were socially maybe lost a little bit. They, they didn't really fit into one social group or another. And those were the kids that I really tried to help out, that I really tried to encourage them because sometimes they, a lot, there's a lot of kids that they don't necessarily play youth sports, yeah. you, you know, youth soccer, youth football. And so they get to the eighth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade and they don't feel comfortable going out for a sport because they never, tr never tried it before. Yeah. Um, and so those kids, I would really encourage them to go out for a team, uh, whatever team may, it may be. And one of the greatest things for me was, you know, three or four years later when those kids were juniors and seniors in high school, and they came back and they would say, Mr. Ken, you know, thank you so much for encouraging me to go out for football or volleyball or cross country yeah. or whatever it may be. Uh, that to me was something that really, you know, hit home right here. It yeah. kind of yeah. brought a tear to my eye. And whether those kids turned out to be superstar athletes or just everyday kids on the team. Um, the fact that they got involved, they, they created so many great friendships that they may otherwise not have created. It, it got them involved in the school in a different dynamic than, than the normal school hours. Um, those, those things to me are what's really important, so. Well, it, it is. Um, and I can give you, uh, I'd like to give you a little example, yeah. a personal example here. That, and. Um, uh, I have a son that played football in his last year, and um, he had played soccer before yeah. that. And uh, when he played the football, uh, Coach B said, well, yeah. well, what are you good at? And I said, well, I don't know. I haven't done football. To make a long story short, they, they were at a scrimmage before the season, and the, the kicker had a concussion. Yeah. So Coach B said, okay, Stapleton, go in there and, and do a <laughs> kicker. You're, yeah. a, you're a soccer player. Well, he made the kick and that was his job for the year. That's great. But the point I'm trying to make was that it was such a great year for him yeah. that it, it just gave him the confidence and so on. And, uh, yeah. and it, it's, it's just a wonderful camaraderie yeah. that uh, it, whether it's football, like you say, uh, soccer, volleyball, whatever. Yeah. And it just gives uh, people a chance to see another side Absolutely. and feel really good about themselves. Absolutely. And, uh, and that, that, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I, think. Uh, I think a lot of kids, like I mentioned, have that kind of anxiety yeah, and fear. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. Once they get involved, uh, to hear stories like that is yeah. it really, you know, it, it touches you. It touches makes your it heart. all worthwhile. Yeah, it makes it all worthwhile. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, um, let's go into um, uh, why you took this position yes. and how did you apply for it in, in what happened? Tell us a little bit about how you got here. So I got my license as a school administrator mm -hmm. uh, a few years back. I had gone through the Commonwealth Leadership Academy, uh, which was run through Endicott College. Um, mm -hmm. Did an apprenticeship with my, my uh, high school athletic director as well as my school principal. I got licensed as both an athletic director and principal. Um, and so I was kind of just waiting for the right opportunity. I. I loved my position where I was and I had told myself I didn't want to you know apply for anything unless I thought it was going to be a really good fit uh -huh. and when this position opened up I, I tell you I gotta tell you I don't think there could have been a better position for me personally um, because having worked in Melrose all these years and having all that experience in Melrose Wakefield is kind of the next closest thing um, in regards to the school uh -huh. uh, the, the demographics of the city, the, you know, the socioeconomic status, the population size, uh, the type of kids you're dealing with. It's very, very similar school to Melrose where I was, where I had all my experience. Right. So really for me, it was a perfect opportunity. Um, I, I feel like I'm walking into a really great situation because uh, I'm coming from a school system very, very similar and I'm coming into a situation where we have a brand new middle school, brand new mm -hmm. fields, um, wow, great, yeah. great,
great new yeah. Dr. Kim Smith, a great new uh, superintendent, um, some great principals, some great people to work with. Um, so I'm really excited. I think it was the perfect fit for me personally, and I'm just thrilled to have this opportunity. So. Well, I think it, it's, uh, it is a good opportunity for you, and I think so also for uh, Wakefield, too. Yeah. Um, and, and what I like about it, being an older person, obviously, uh, you're youth, you know, you have a lot of energy, you have, uh, you may want to change a few things, and, yep. uh, and that's always good, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, people will look up to you, and uh, you'll probably be able to relate to the, yes. to the kids better, you know, than, than <laughs> who knows. But um, I think it's, just, it's, a, yeah. it's a great fit. But with all good things, you know, you have to have to deal with some uh, things that aren't Absolutely. so good. So Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? But, uh, uh, it, you know, I, I've seen some of the ADs before you had to deal with some pretty yes. tough situations, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, you're probably going to get hit with a few of those. Yeah. So uh, how do you think you'll deal with all that? I mean, uh, I don't know what it will be, but yeah. uh, so you're going to get hit with it. <laughs> exactly. So this was actually... A question yeah. in one of my interviews, mm -hmm. um, and I feel very strongly about my answer. Is yeah. uh, I know that in my heart that the most popular decision isn't always the right decision, mm -hmm. and the right decision isn't always the most popular decision. So, having said that, I know that there's going to be situations where I have to make a decision, and some people aren't going to be very happy with the outcome. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so in a position like this, you kind of have to have thick skin. But the answer that I gave to the interview committee and to Dr. Zreich and Dr. Smith, and I'll say it to the community, all my decisions, regardless of what the specific situation, all my decisions are going to be based on what is best for the kids. Um, and I know that you know, sometimes a group of parents or maybe a group of coaches might not be happy with what decision I make, but if deep down inside my heart, I believe that that decision is going to be the best for our kids and the best for our school, then that's the decision I'm going to go with. Um, regardless of who may be upset with me and how many phone calls I might get the next day, right, yeah. if I think it's best for our kids, that's what I'm going to do. And I think if you have some core values and things that you really believe in, those decisions decisions will be easy for you, um, regardless of what kind of flack you might get for them. So, well, it is a big job. There's no yes. question about it, and there's a lot to it. And um, and I'm sure you'll do a, you'll do a fine job. Um, and what I'd like to do at this point, something uh, that you brought up, uh, is that maybe once a month we do a show here. Yeah. to uh, keep people tuned in as to what's going on. Absolutely. And you could pick uh, a yeah. certain topic that you'd yeah. want and uh, I'll bring a guest in or something. Yeah. And, uh, and keep the town involved and tuned in to uh, you know, the next step or what happened yes. at this point. But, Absolutely. Uh, uh, so I think that would be a good idea. I, I do too because yeah. I'm a huge believer in involving the community, mm -hmm. involving the parents in, in the educational, you know, um, careers of their children. Uh, so I'm a huge believer in engaging community in what we do here in the schools. Yeah. Um, so any type of outreach programs such as this, I think is a good thing. Um, I've already, I've started up a Twitter account for the high school athletics. Okay. Um, yeah. I plan on starting up a Facebook, you know, using different social media uh, platforms to get information out mm -hmm. to the public. Because a lot of times, the public is misinformed or they don't know at all. So right, yeah. I think the, the more avenues that you can take to get information out to the public, to get them involved in the schools, is, is really something that I want to address. Um, mm -hmm. You know, high school football games, Friday nights, I want that to be more than just the football parents and the band parents and the cheerleader, yeah. cheerleader parents. Mm -hmm. I want that to be an event where the entire community can come out and come together as a community. Um, you know, where you can bring your young children and, and, and just enjoy a night out and socialize right. with neighbors. Um, so, well, you do, you do, uh, you, you mentioned earlier you have some facilities here. Yeah, just some beautiful, amazing. Yes, you know I mean? uh, absolutely. Between the Galvin and, and the Landrigan and yes. Beasley and the new uh, field house, and yes. it's just 
it's just like a campus out yeah, there. Yeah, it's mean, awesome. It's, it's, it's great. It's really wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and it's been a big draw, too, I think, for for parents that, uh, that move into Wakefield. Yes. Because they want, not just with sports, but I mean, the curriculum too. Yeah. So Wakefield's uh, is getting on the map. And, it uh, is, yeah. Timing is just uh, just perfect for yeah. you. Yeah. This is great. I hope I can do a great job and make yeah. everybody proud. That's really Well, I'm sure you will. And, uh, you know, if you make mistakes, well, then that's <laughs> the way it goes. Yeah. Everybody does. Yeah. Nobody's it's perfect, as long right. as you learn from them. That's it. Great. Yeah. Well, okay then, so I wish you luck. I mean, uh, it is new and you'll be starting out in a little while here. Yep. I don't want to date this show, so I'm not going to say <laughs> a school, school will start soon. Yep. And yep. Um, look forward to it. So uh, yeah. I look forward to our next meeting. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Mr. Okay. Singleton. Take care. Thank you. Bye now.